Back here on the set, Peter Van Dusen, as we look at the convention hall filling up now for uh, the tribute night to former Prime Minister Stephen Harper. Uh, he'll make a, about a five, I think about a five to eight minute speech. Uh, you can bet it'll be well received in this room. The party making a, a, a real point of talking about the fact that they're getting past the election loss of last fall and are talking about the party in the future and how the party moves forward. Some of the things it needs to do to get uh, back to power, that's the ultimate goal uh, for any political party, is to be in power in government, and that's a lot of what the weekend's about. And uh, let's talk a little bit about uh, that conversation with my next two guests, uh, two Conservative MPs, Jason Kenney from Alberta and Candace Bergen from Manitoba. Good to see you both. Hi, Thank Peter. you, Peter. Let me pick up, if I can, I want to talk a little bit about Stephen Harper's contribution to the party and what tonight's all about. But let me just pick up on uh, Peter McKay's comments about this resolution, one member, one, uh, one vote, that'll come back before the convention again. I think it's, uh, as he said, convention number five, where it's been an issue, but uh, never gets beyond the discussion stage. But we'll see if it even gets to the floor tomorrow. It's got to get out of the workshops. Uh, Jason Kenney, where do, you, where do you stand? Peter McKay's position is, no, our system works well now, and uh, that was one of the founding principles of uniting the two parties 13 years ago now, and it's there to stay and can't be changed. Well, on the one hand, I would say that um, we shouldn't be resistant to change. The notion that one model that was selected uh, 13 years ago can never be subject to change, I think, overrides the uh, decision-making authority of the members. That, that's what this convention and all of these conventions are about. They're grassroots representatives of our ordinary members deciding how, how to govern their party. So the party doesn't belong to Stephen Harper, Jason Kenney, or Peter McKay. It belongs to those members. And if they think there's, we should have a more balanced approach in terms of selecting the leadership, I don't think we should raise uh, strong objections Does to Does the that. system work the way it is? Do you think it makes well, sense? Well, we've only had one leadership. Uh, I, I think, uh, there, look, put it this way. I think there's a, there's a compelling uh, argument to have about uh, equal weighting or roughly equal weighting for individual constituencies. On the other hand, you want to avoid extreme aberrations. You could have a situation technically where there's one riding with 25 members that gets the same points as riding with 2,500 members, and I don't think that's fair. So from time to time, we've, I, I haven't actually read the resolutions right. here, but, but there have been suggestions of, like, you only get 100 points in your riding if 100 people vote. That modest compromise okay. seems to be pretty reasonable. All right. Uh, what's your view, Candice Bergen? You know, I, uh, it's not for me a hill that I, I, I would die on. Or I, I think the system uh, was set up, the, the two parties united under uh, that, that system. Um, I worked in, and ran Stephen Harper's leadership campaign in Manitoba on that system. We understood the rules, and, uh, and, it, and it was and fine. So he won big. But I agree with Jason, and I think it's what makes us so strong as Conservatives. We love talking about new ideas. We love debating. We have no problems disagreeing. And uh, I think it's great that we're going to talk about it again. And, and I do agree, uh, the party doesn't belong to one person, and this is the place to talk about it and, and to make this kind of decision. But in the, the, the party's uh, 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 in the midst of a leadership race, three declared candidates, and we'll, we'll get to the two of you in just a moment. But uh, so the sort of the lay of the land now, if you're, what are your chances of, of winning in that kind of model, one member, one vote, and, and what are the consequences for, if you're in Ontario and Quebec, with small riding associations compared to uh, some of the very big ones in Alberta with, with membership, uh, why would you bother? Or, or is the challenge for you to build the riding associations if you want to try and win the leadership? I think anybody who's aspiring to leadership wants to have strong support in every corner of the country. Um, and I think that we should have an incentive both to sell memberships uh, but also to be present across the country, which is why I've generally supported something like a, a compromise right. between pure one member, one vote and pure uh, uh, riding uh, equality I think a balance between the two gives you that dynamic where it creates growth in membership but also ensures geographic representation. Yeah, and, you know, we, we don't want to see somebody sell 13,000 memberships in you know, one riding right. and no memberships uh, in another area of the country and to be able to win the leadership. Uh, I don't think anybody would be happy with that. So it, but it, there's got to be a compromise in a way to be able to do both, be able to include the entire country. In just a little bit, the, the official ceremonies get an opening ceremonies get underway. We're going to hear from Stephen Harper. Uh, been made pretty clear to me through different contexts that uh, he really didn't want a night like this. He certainly didn't want it to be about him. And I'm given to understand it won't be. It'll be a lot about uh, the party and the people in the party uh, who kept the government in power for 10 years. What do you think tonight is about uh, when it comes to Stephen Harper? 
Well, I'm not surprised that uh, that Stephen Harper didn't want this to be about him, um, but I'm, I'm also not surprised that he's he's here and he's doing it. I mean, these conventions are uh, volunteers, people who uh, are usually on boards and have done so much for the party on the ground, uh, and and they love we, we we love Stephen Harper. We we appreciate so much the, the leadership that he 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 gave to Canada, and I, I think he's doing this uh, for the people who are here and the people that want to see him and and be able to express their gratitude. Attitude. You know, I, I hear as well that, that he wasn't very keen on, on having a public role here. He had to be sort of controlled a right. little bit into doing it. And that, you know, I think the general public who never had, never had an opportunity to, to get to know Stephen Harper, yeah. the person, I, I mean, I've, who I've known uh, since about 1990, don't understand he's actually an intensely private and, and, and somewhat shy person. I mean, he's, he's in his normal life almost tend, 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 tend to be more of an introvert than an right. extrovert. And now that you know, now that he's no longer prime minister, he doesn't have to go out there and he's do not, the big yes. public events. Uh, and I think he's he's relishing that degree of, of privacy. So this yeah. is the first time that he's, he's been, been in front of cameras yeah. or a crowd yeah. uh, since October the 19th. Uh, but look, he's a pro, um, and and he, I, you know, I, I he created this party. Let there be no doubt. Without exactly. his leadership, we would not have Bring a conservative, United Conservative together. Party of Canada. Yeah. He, when he became leader of the Canadian Alliance. I think we were at one point down to 12% yeah, in the polls. Yeah, really low. We were broken into three separate factions in Parliament. Uh, Paul Martin was the juggernaut who was going to win yeah. two, at least 200 yeah. seats that and govern for 20 book. years. There's a book written about it and, that year. Um, I mean, it is, it is truly one of the minor miracles of Canadian political history that this intellectual guy from Calgary managed to bring together all of these warring factions into a credible alternative government and govern for 10 years. So and he wasn't in the caucus. I mean, when he ran, he wasn't a member of, of the caucus. Yeah. He, had, he wasn't elected, so he, he had to do it from kind of from outside in, in a sense, and he was about ideas and about policy. Uh, right. I mean, I know when he first ran initially, I, I didn't know who he was. <laughs> you know, it was uh, I was a volunteer, and, and I didn't know who he was, so, but yeah. it really it really is remarkable I, what, what he's done. I, I think, you know, there's a lot of Canadians who, for one reason or another, weren't big fans of Stephen Harper. But I, I would hope that even they tonight, if they're watching this, could say, you know, here's a guy who loves his country, uh, made a lot of sacrifices to serve it, and objectively speaking, is a pretty phenomenal leader in, in terms of his record. And, you know, I think the other part of this, I mean, we know, we've known him for a lot of years. We, we know what he's done. But, you know, when you think of, of a professional uh, hockey player, when he retires, they, they don't put him in the Hall of Fame immediately. Uh, it's probably going to take a little bit of time, I, I think, for what he's done and the legacy that he has created uh, and the things that we've seen. I think it's going to take a little bit of time for, for the general public and for Canadians to, to see that. Maybe those Canadians who didn't, as you said, didn't like his personality or his eyes or whatever it was. It, I think it's just going to take a bit of time, but, but definitely he's left an amazing legacy. Let's finish on what's next. Uh, do you plan to run for the leadership? Well, I, I don't, but you know, to this this today I've been having people ask me. So go. I said, listen, if you can get X number of checks <laughs> for this amount of money, what am I going to say? Sign me up. <laughs> Jason Kenney. Uh, I'm on Team Burger. We, we, yeah, yeah, yeah. But, so. I'm my first supporter right here. <laughs> when will we? When will you make a decision one way or the other? You know. Uh, and, and what will it be based this on? This summer I'll make a decision. Okay. I, I have to tell you, Peter, uh, I've been humbled by very considerable expressions of support. I uh, can hardly get through the, the hallways because of people I, I just realized after sort of 20 years of working in this movement how many people I know and, and uh, a lot of them have, seem to have confidence in me. Uh, but I need to figure out what's right for me after 19 years in Parliament mm -hmm. uh, and, uh, and how I could best contribute to the Conservative movement in my country. And the answer to that has not been obvious to me to date. Really? Um, and it has not it's been. It's when you about a decision about after 19 years in Parliament sounds well, like that's, you're means, not even sure you want to continue in public life. I would say um, that we all hope to win the election in 2019, but we have to be prepared for two terms. We have to be prepared for the possibility of two terms in opposition. Term this is a long-term mm -hmm. commitment, yeah. and somebody who has to, has to be absolutely sure they're prepared to go the distance. So I, I just going through that discernment process. And one thing I want to say, though, I don't think it's helpful for our party to have sort of this 16, 18 month long leadership process that a couple of people have been trying to generate. Uh, that's like a US style presidential primary, the never ending nomination that eats up resources, focuses us inwards rather than keeping the liberals to account. So I think candidates should be deciding 
later than earlier, uh, and that's kind of where my headspace has been. Right, but three of them are already out there. You're saying that they shouldn't be? Uh, that's their decision. Uh, for my part, uh, I haven't felt any compulsion to make a decision uh, sort of 16 months before the actual election. Right. If, if, if And how do I frame, frame this? If, if somebody that someone viewed as a, uh, a, a, um, a higher priority content, like if Peter McKay announced next week, uh, would that force you to... I, I, think, uh, I think a lot... I, look, I think that most of the people in the party are waiting to see who the slate of candidates are. Right. And, uh, and that'll be a little while yet. Okay. Uh, thank you both. Uh, have a great weekend. I'm sure we'll get a chance to talk again, uh, either up here or somewhere on the floor with our cameras everywhere. Thanks, Peter. Jason yeah. Kenny, Candice Bergen, thank you both. Thanks, Peter. Thank you.